G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Now by a very popular request, everybody has been asking me, I've been getting begging emails to review this. It's the new OWL camera from RunCam. And as you can see, it comes in the RunCam box, but I've opened it because we don't do unboxings here. This is the 700 TV line one, and it is said to be, what is it? Um, 100 micro lux, which is 0 0.0001 lux. Lux is a, uh, a measure of lighting. The amount of well, lumens is another way of looking at it. There's uh, all sorts of ways to measure lighting, but they use lux here. It's a little bit deceptive, the lux value, because it also depends on the f-stop of the lens. And um, if people are interested, I can go into this in greater detail, but suffice to say that a lux rating on its own is pretty meaningless, because it depends on the lens you're using as to what that's going to mean in the real world. And here is the camera itself. It's just a little, you know, you can see, well, tiny little thing. In fact, if I get my calipers out, I'll measure it for you so you know how big it is. The actual base of this here is, let's have a measure. Ooh, come on, hurry up. Um, yep, that's about eight, nearly nine millimeters by nine millimeters. There we go. And the depth is, so you know whether it'll fit in your copter, um, up to that part of the lens, it is around about 20, 20 and a half millimeters up to the little flange on the start of the lens there. And look at the size of that lens. Well, actually, <laughs> if you look really closely, you'll see it's not actually the full size of the lens. The lens is a little tiny bit in the middle. They just have this big glass cover on it. I guess it looks good. Half inch sensor, they tell me, which is 12 and a half millimeters. And that's quite important because the bigger the sensor, the more light you can gather onto it. And in theory, the better the low light performance. So this comes with a little external piece and heat shrink here. This is actually just a voltage regulator, a UBEC, because this will run on five to 25 volts. So that's your, basically your two cells to, yeah, um, six cells. Actually, it's 22 volts, I think. Look at the box, look at the box. Oh no, I tell a lie. Don't believe me, I'm wrong. It's five to 17 volts. So that's a maximum of four cells. So from two to four cells, which is probably all you want to run it on. If you're gonna use it on something like a, a quadcopter, mini quad to fly around at night. There you go, it comes with a lens cap too. Woohoo, first thing you lose. And it's not the same size, I don't know if it's the same size as normal lens cap, it looks a bit bigger. Let's try a normal lens cap and see if it fits. I don't think it will, because yeah, look, that lens is way bigger than your normal lens. Right, so the problem I've got at the moment is it's blowing a gale and it's raining, so I can't really test this outside. Now it's supposed to clear tonight, woohoo, but uh, I, again, we have another problem that in New Zealand, it's illegal to fly a model at night unless you're operating in what's called a shielded operation, which means you're flying beneath the height of the tallest structure within 100 meters. And that really means flying in a park with tall trees or whatever. And here in Tokoro in New Zealand, our beloved council has said nobody may fly in the parks or reserves because we just don't understand these drone things. We're too lazy to work out whether it's a good thing or not. Man, that's the price of uh, freedom, I suppose. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I've got my LCD here. This is the, I think it's a 700, so what is it? Um, I don't know. Um, I've reviewed this previously anyway. It's not a bad L uh, LCD. It has a built-in DVR, not the highest quality DVR. It does produce, um, you know, standard definition recording, but it tends to be a bit pixelated. And yeah, if you've got a bit of noise in the video, then it does pixelate quite badly, but it'll do for this particular application because we're looking at how well this thing handles low light. So what I'm going to do, it's pretty basic really, I'm just going to plug, you can see into the AV input, I'm going to plug that into the camera. The camera comes with this little lead, which is a servo type connected to an RCA, like so, which means that I just plug this into this adapter here and plug it into my AV lead. Then I plug this into my little OWL camera and I've got a separate battery. I'm going to use an LIFE battery, which is about 6.6 .6 volts to power the OWL camera. And then I'm going to basically Velcro this on the back of my little LCD like that. And it makes a night vision setup. I'm going to go wandering around the park at night and just see what it looks like in a relatively, you know, pretty low light environment. Can't fly, so I'm going to wander around in the park. So I'll get this set up and then we will jump cut to the park walk. So here it is. It's the world's cheapest night vision setup. <laughs> As you can see, she's pretty bodge. Got my owl camera mounted on here, just a bit of Velcro. Got the life battery to power it, mounted on here with a bit of Velcro. I'll just plug that in. Got a separate battery, three cell 2200, or oh, no, three cell 1000, to power the LCD, and we'll be away. I'll just be able to walk around like this and 
see what's in front of me, hopefully without falling over and killing myself. So there won't be a microphone on here, unfortunately, so I'll have to overdub it once I've taken the footage, but I think I might just go out and uh, try and get some footage in daylight, because obviously we want to compare the daylight footage to the nighttime footage. It's, it's not going to be as useful a camera if it's daylight footage is crap. Uh, if it's sacrificed anything with normal lighting to give it that better nighttime performance. And I should mention, actually, while I remember it, that there are two versions of this camera. That's the 700 TV line. There is an 800 TV line as well. So I'll take this one out as well and try them out both, see if there's any difference in performance. That's pretty important. And just, I don't unbox things, but if you buy one, you're going to get this. It's going to have instruct, but no, it's just going to have specifications. And there's the camera. Not a lot to see, is there? And then you have to unbag it, but I won't do that. And this will look exactly the same as the other one, so I hope I don't get them confused. Rightio, now it's time to go to the park. Okay, here I am at the park we'll be using later to uh, to do some nighttime testing. And as you can see, we've got the camera all set up here. I'm using the SJ5, no, 4000, the Tenergy Action Camera to film this. So excuse me if the audio isn't quite right and the image isn't as good as my Sony. But as you can see, I'm recording now. And it's quite overcast. Sky is quite leaden. And uh, I notice there's no wide dynamic range because when I point this up at the sky here, you can see the image actually goes quite and the trees detail is lost. Come back down, it's fine. But once you get a bit of bright sky in there, then the detail is lost on the ground below. So don't expect this to perform as well as a 600 TV line camera with wide dynamic range. It's not designed for daytime flying, but it does a reasonably respectable job, I guess. Now let's just take a walk over here. I'll come back and do the same walk once the sun has gone down to give you all an indication of what that's going to look like. Better make sure I'm not blocking the microphone. Here's the microphone on this thing. Excuse me while I, oh, there it is, <clears throat> I think. Don't know. Anyway, hopefully I haven't blocked the microphone. So there it goes. A bit of wind here at the moment. As I say, the weather is quite crappy. And this is the 600 TV line version of this camera. But yeah, as I say, the light handling, it's not so flash. But it's the nighttime use that's going to be the key factor. So we'll see how that pans out. Here we go. Hope there's not too much wind noise, right? That's enough for the daytime. We'll come back when the sun has set. Right. I'm now in the park where I was before. I can't see a damn thing actually. There is um, absolutely no light here. There's no starlight. So this isn't a, a zero light camera. You do need some illumination. But if we turn around, you can see the quite significant amount of image you can get from just the ambient lighting. Street lighting really light and lights things up, but over here I'm afraid, yeah, we can see a tree, but not much more, but I wouldn't expect to. <laughs> this is, as you can see, the difference between the HD footage and the run cam footage. There is a huge amount of uh, improvement with the owl over a regular camera now. I'm going to walk. It's actually raining at the moment. It hasn't let up for days. So there are some drops of water on the lens of the owl camera, as you can see. Which isn't helping at all, but I'm going to walk down the street now. As you can see, you could fly in this very easily. And everything is really well lit up by the street lights. It is a bit grainy, but I guess you expect that. But uh, really, that is just uh, quite impressive. Quite impressive indeed. I could easily fly this. up to my house this will probably even kick into colour I would expect dogs barking it's 
to see what it takes to kick into colour as the light intensity increases. As you can see the outside light here is really lighting things up. And we're dropped, there we go. So we've got colour. See the noise coming up there. And then it goes into black and white. Then we've got colour. You see the coloured noise come up and then it'll just drop through to black and white. It gives us much greater sensitivity. So there you go. Pretty impressive.